Welcome back, I'm thrilled to have you here. We've recently been making some diabolical and quite ghastly items here in the workshop. And thanks to you lovely commenters, I have discovered another thing for us to make, and that is the thumbscrew. It was a torture instrument that was first used in early modern Europe. The idea is, of course, as the name implies, the thumbs get put inside, the screw clamps it down, and it is painful. It can be used with thumbs, fingers, toes, everything. It sometimes had barbs to penetrate the nail bed and cause excruciating pain. And this right here is the model of thumbscrew that I want to make. And apparently thumbscrews can also be called pillywinks. So that's a wonderfully sweet name for something utterly disgusting. So let's make one. So we need to make a shape that looks like somebody doing the full split. And I think I've got a game plan. We're gonna make basically this. That's two plugs punched out. We learned a hell of a lot when we were making the caltrops recently. Punching a hole at the bottom of a split really helps avoid cracks. Now today's been a great day of learning for me and I know that if you watch these videos you're probably the type of person that's curious and likes learning things too. Which is why I'm pretty sure that you're going to like today's sponsor which is Skillshare. It is an online learning community with over 25,000 courses in all sorts of subjects imaginable. Whether it is that you want to learn about photography, editing, crochet, watercolour or building an online brand on Skillshare there is a course to help you do that. With a premium Skillshare membership you can watch and learn from as many courses as you possibly want. It starts at just $10 a month and not only do you get access to the phenomenal course videos, you also get access to a community of like-minded people to interact and connect with on the platform. The course I'm recommending today is for those of you that are interested in becoming a content creator, making YouTube videos, and it is From Clueless to Content Creator by Aaron Palabiab. We're in a brand new year, and if you've got goals for this year that need knowledge, Skillshare is the place to get it. The first thousand of you that click my link in the description below are going to get their first month of Skillshare completely free. So go check it out, enjoy it, and happy learning. Let's get back to the video. Now this splits actually turned out pretty rough. You can see there is a lot of rag on these inside edges. That's caused by not lining up the cuts very evenly. So it made a nasty split, so it's going to require a little bit more cleanup. But what we've got to do before we can clean it up is open the times out, so we're going to lock it in the vise and use the chisel and some tongs to pull them out. Grinding the rag off is one option, and another option is chiseling it off. Maybe a little more authentic to the time. So I think we're on track to have this thing nailed to a T, and we're getting to the point where I need to think about how we're going to thread this thing. It's right now 12.7 millimeters wide at the base, 11 and a half up here. It's got a little bit of a taper to it. It might make sense to have a 12 mil thread, but we might be cutting it a little close. I feel like it being 12 mil, near enough half an inch, would make it look nice and beefy, nice and industrial. 10 mil, we might lose some of that quality. So we're going to chug it in the fire and octagonalize it and then round it out. Some of you watching might have the question as to if we want to end up with a round shape, why don't we just forge it round the whole time? Well, we can only change the dimension of steel when it is square or rectangular or hexagonal, which means that we have to get to the final dimension in a square form, then take it to an octagon before we take the corners off and go to a round. With hand hammer and anvil like this, it's just not possible to change dimension while you're still in the round cross section. You've got to be forging against yourself. So it's now on to cutting the thread. When we made the Bradmore Arrow Extractor, we forged the threads and forged the internal thread. That strategy worked very well for that tool because we were able to have a very large pitch. It's not about a massive amount of force. 
For the thumb screw, however, we're hand tightening something to cause excruciating pain, so we want a fine pitch. Because the finer the pitch, the greater our mechanical advantage, as you have to rotate more times to move the screw a given distance. Further to that, looking at the image of that historical one, it looks like it's threaded, and I would imagine in quite the similar fashion to how we're gonna thread it. Taps and dies aren't necessarily an ultra, ultra modern invention. They can be made and case hardened, and I wouldn't be surprised if taps and dies, in some shape or form, have existed for a very long time. The first component is done. And I think it looks freaking awesome. I'm really, really happy with that. I'm now going to work on what is actually the thumb screw of the thumb screw. We need to make the little wing nut that threads in, little Mickey Mouse looking thing like that with the corresponding thread here. I've never made a little wing nut like this before. So we're gonna do a little experimentation. We'll see what we can do. You know, on this nut, I'm frankly just winging it. I bloody well love how that turned out. I can't believe it. First time, and we turned out something that looks really neat. I've also cut this little bit of steel right here. That's the bar that's gonna be put through all three times, so it needs three holes. As you can see, it's currently a little bit short, but don't worry, it's a grower, not a shower. I hate bending things. Bending things is so difficult. I'm trying to get this all to line up and... Bah! So close. <laughs> yes! Ah, but not yes. Oh, it's so yes! Maybe getting a little bit excited here. Final little bit is drilling and tapping this. And we've got ourselves another sex de uh, torture device for the arsenal. I can't believe how cool this thing looks. I thought it was gonna look rough as can be, turned out great, but it wouldn't be a video of making a torture device if I didn't get tortured. So Jamie, uh, feel free to do the honors, but like gently, gently, like you gotta slow down. This is quite painful. Oh, it's getting quite painful. You can keep going. Oh! Oh! Where's he gone? Disappeared, no, not this too. Not that. Oh God, no, no. As ever, big thank you for watching and big thank you for the recommendations on what to make. And a big, big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget the first thousand of you that click the link in the description. Get a free month. Thumbs up.